Hey everybody, it's Gina here from Gina Makes It, and today I am sharing a tutorial on how to create a no sew mini book. This is one of those mini books that fold out endlessly and you can make it as long or short as possible. I've always wanted to make one of these, but I can never quite figure out how it was assembled. It just never made sense to me, so I decided to sit down and make a prototype, and here I am sharing it with you. So the basis of my mini book is white cardstock. You can use anything that you want. I suggest using something a little sturdier like a cardstock because it'll hold up a little bit better. And I'm using three eight and a half by 11 sheets because I want 16 panels in my fold out book. And by panel, I mean squares. And so it, they end up being a little bit over four inches. And so I want 16 of those and that's front and back. Um, that's a, the number of them when you count them on the front and on the back because you can see both sides. So now I'm just folding each of these strips in half and so the fold mark would be at the five and a half um, measurement if you're measuring but there's really no need to if you're using eight and a half by eleven because you would just kind of fold it in half to where each end meets. I'm trimming off my edges. Sometimes I get these weird little things on the end when I cut certain papers so I'm just trimming it off. Now my next step is that I need to create the little flap to adhere each panel to. And so I am measuring, actually, I first I was going to measure and then fold it, but I thought, oh, this is the perfect opportunity to use my little mini scoreboard. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. And so I'm going to score the edge, the outside edge of this first panel at four and an eighth because I want it to be a little bit bigger than four inches because the paper that I'm gonna put down is gonna be four by four and I want just a tiny, tiny little white border around the edges. So I'm scoring it at four and an eighth. Um, and the it was originally cut at four and a quarter so it would sort of roughly measure out to four and an eighth um, in the perimeter um, anyhow, so you'll see that I'm folding the creases opposite than the middle. So the middle one goes down and then the two outside panels that I just created at four and an eighth curve the other way. And so you want it to, to be like that. So the two on the end are going the same way and the one in the middle is going the opposite way. Now for my next um, piece of little strip here, instead of scoring it at four and an eighth, I'm actually trimming it at four and an eighth. And then I'm going to score the other side at four and an eighth and create um, another panel that is going in the opposite direction than my middle crease. So the idea here is that we're going to create all of our squares and then we're going to attach them to the edge. And so you want one side that's trimmed and the other side that is creased other than the first one. The first one will have two um, to begin with, but then I end up trimming it in the end anyhow, but it's just easier to do it this way. I think personally, you can trim it if you want, but I would just leave it because maybe you'll want to use the closure like to close the, the book differently than I did and you might want to use that extra panel. So again, I'm just going to trim at four and an eighth and then I'm going to go to the other side. You can see I'm just going to attach it to that little panel on the side. I'm going to score at four and an eighth. I'm going to fold it the opposite way. So my crease is going to go the opposite way um, that my inner crease is and then I'm going to attach that and I'm just going to continue with the rest of the panels in the same exact uh, fashion. So I have the amount of panels that I want. I wanted uh, 14 for pictures, and then I need two extra, one for a cover and one for a back. So I have 16 squares total. That's front and back. And now I'm going to turn around the back part of the little booklet. And I'm not exactly on camera, and I'm really kind of upset about that. But you'll see I fold it over so it covers, it creates a little booklet around the end. So you just take that back panel and you fold it to the left and come around like a book cover. And then you'll have two extra panels. You'll have a back panel that's already creased, and then you'll have a front panel. You'll see I'm trying to figure out how I want it to work. And so what's going to happen is that I'm just going 
going to cut off that front panel and then I am going to use that back panel as a closure and because there is some substantial volume with the actual um, pages as they're stacked on top of each other what happens is that the the original crease or score isn't giving the book enough room to close properly but that's easily fixed and all I do is I take my little mini scoreboard and if you don't have a scoreboard you can just fold it and I mark a score right at the very edge of the paper the pages and then I take I go about another eighth of an inch or maybe it's even a quarter of an inch but it's a very small amount I actually think it's an eighth of an inch and I create a little that's eh, a quarter of an inch and I create a little bit of a rectangle so you can see you're sort of creating like a match box um, like a match booklet top and then you create a little rectangle and then it gives it enough width for those pages to fit in it um, perfectly so I'm just going over it again I really want it creased because I really want to create that shape that little rectangle shape there with my two scores that are about a quarter or yeah they're they can't be an eighth an eighth wouldn't be enough so it's about a quarter of an inch apart now I'm marking that's my cover and that's my back because it all looks the same <laughs> and I have a little flip over um, booklet. Now I'm going to actually cut out my papers that I'm going to use to line the squares with. And so these papers come from a digital kit in my Etsy store. These papers that I'm going through right now, the ones at the top, those were printed on 105 pound paper. These at the bottom here, I printed on a mixture of cardstock and a premium matte photo paper. This right here is premium matte photo paper. And you can see the one on the right is just regular cardstock and the one on the left is premium photo matte photo paper and it gives a much vibrant color than just regular cardstock and I use the same printer setting for both so in case you're ever wondering what the difference is. But this paper right here it's not um, exactly printer paper it's a little bit heavier. I think printer paper is like 80 pound maybe so this is 105 pound and you can get this anywhere. I think I got it at my a really long time ago. I just knew that I wanted something a little bit thicker than regular photo paper um, because I just that's what I wanted. So I am using this digital kit. Um, I'll link it down below if you're interested in it to line the all the squares in my little booklet here and I have four um, decorative pages uh, of paper and I'm going to cut four squares from each and so that's going to give me 16 squares to cover my little squares in my no so mini book. Once I finish cutting out all 16 squares I'm going to take um, each square to my sewing machine and I'm going to create a little perimeter with some gray thread around the edges of each. I'm going to go around it twice to give it sort of like this loosey-goosey border. I've been doing that a lot in my journals and my mini books and I really like the effect that it gives. It does take a little bit of time I have to say it's not the quickest process but I really really like the texture that it gives on each page and once I uh, finish doing that then it's time to decide what design I want on the cover what design I want on the back cover if it's going to be the same design and then how I'm going to um, alternate the papers on the inside pages so I decided to use the this pattern on the cover and I'm also going to create a little a swatch to go over that fold in the front that little flap I'm going to sew around the edges of that and then I'm also going to put one on that little rectangle scored area right there that we created to accommodate the width of the pages itself and I'm just going to sew up and down on that too just so that it all matches and once I have that um, cut out and sewn then I'm just going to attach it with some glue and this isn't the easiest process because I have a cat <laughs> I should say a little kitten who keeps trying to crawl all over my desk table here so I'm using a tape gun to put these larger pieces down because I don't need glue for this but for those smaller pieces and there's little princess um, I am going to use uh, some glue just that little rectangle piece on the side just because it was the the tape of the tape gun was actually too wide um, to to use on that edge there so I'm sort of cre we're creating this seamless little mini book um, and I really like the way that it's turning out so on the back I decide to use different paper because when you open it all up the back and the 
the cover are part of the accordion and so I wanted to alternate the, the um, these designs in a certain pattern because I'm type A and so it all had to be like A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, you know, that's just kind of how I work. And it just makes the process a lot easier for me to think through. And doing it randomly would just never work. And so <laughs> I created a pattern and I'm going to stick to the pattern and it actually works out with the front cover and the back cover. Now that I finished putting those paper layers on, it is time to work on a closure. So you could very easily put a grommet in this little flap, put some twine around it, and you would have a very nice closure. However, grommets are not my friends. I've tried so many times to put grommets in things, and I just don't like the way the back side looks. It looks so smashed and um, just not very neat. And I don't know if it's me or if it's like the tool that I have or what the story is, but I've watched videos, I've read up on it, and you know what? I just, grommets and I, we just were not friends. So I decided to use this little wooden um, heart shape as a closure and I am going to color it red with this gelato that I have. After um, I color it, I don't do it on camera, but I do do it off camera. I do cover it in a very thin layer of Mod Podge and it does seal it very nicely. Nothing comes off on your fingers because it was kind of bleeding a little bit here, but it, after you put that little thin layer of Mod Podge, it will not bleed at all. And then I glue the heart on top of a red button because I want to have, um, I want this closure to have a little bit of height so you can wrap the twine around it. Um, to secure it. That's kind of a neat little trick that I've been using lately with closures. I think it gives it a lot of um, height, a lot of texture, and it is a fun way to close up your mini journals and stuff. So after I uh, complete this journal with pictures and stuff and all the ephemera, I am going to post it on my website at ginamakesit.com. So uh, be checking there the next few days within the week I'd say to see the final version of this little no so mini book as always thank you so much for watching and for liking my videos and for commenting I really do appreciate it I'll see you next time bye